Hello, everybody. So I'm just going to make a, a very quick statement. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the folks who are involved here in helping arrange this visit at El Reno, uh, a federal penitentiary. And this is part of our effort to highlight uh, both the challenges and opportunities that we face with respect to the criminal justice system. America, land of the free, contains only 5% of the world's population, but an overwhelming 25% of its inmates. Yet, many Americans don't understand the extent of the problem. What exactly is mass incarceration? It's a term used these days for uh, the situation in which the United States, both at the federal and state level, has gotten itself in uh, over the last 40 years or so in terms of incarcerating a huge proportion of its uh, citizenry. So the term is used increasingly by members of many different political stripes to refer to the problem of the cost of both socially, uh, the cost socially, cost fiscally, uh, and the cost um, culturally of having so many of the citizens uh, in some form of, uh, of penal custody. So, what originally caused America's abnormally high rate of incarceration? We generally associate the declaration of the war on drugs with President Nixon in 1971, 1970, um, really saying those words, declaring a war on drugs. And so in one way, um, if you look at that time period, we could see that the war on drugs is um, uh, connected to the Nixon administration. A lot of people would point to the uh, escalation of the drug war in the 70s and 80s uh, as a time when, when incarceration really started taking off. Uh, in, in defense, there was a, a rise in crime. There was a crime problem in America in the 80s and early 90s that, that would have led to an increase in incarceration anyway. Uh, but without the drug war, uh, without this kind of overcriminalization impulse, it probably wouldn't have, it certainly wouldn't have reached the levels uh, that we see today. It also has a lot to do with uh, change it, with plea bargaining uh, systems, with the advent of mandatory minimum sentences uh, and things like that, as well as the uh, simply criminalizing more human conduct than we had previously. How does mass incarceration affect the U.S.? Experts point to unprecedented government expenditures on the upkeep of millions of prisoners. Criminal justice is the second fastest growing category of state budgets behind only Medicaid, mm -hmm. which is the health program for the poor. Uh, and 90% of the spending on criminal justice uh, goes to prisons, not to courts, not to prosecutors, not to police those to prisons. Furthermore, the repercussions even after a prisoner has been released are numerous. Once you have a criminal record, especially a felony record, it can be difficult to find employment, difficult or impossible to find employment, uh, to go to college, to get financial aid in college, uh, things like that. So these criminal records can follow, will follow people their entire lives and it reduces their productivity and their contributions to society uh, for that entire time. The racial injustice in mass incarceration further presents a negative effect on society, especially in today's state of race relations. African Americans are jailed six times more than white men. What causes this disparity? In my generation and before, uh, a racist outlook was so deeply intertwined with perceptions of America and Americanism and American exceptionalism, that it impacts every part of the criminal justice system. It impacts police and whether they're more likely to make an arrest of someone who doesn't look like uh, they do. Um, we see that in the Black Lives Matter sort of situations where uh, uh, a black suspect, especially a young man, is much, much more likely to be shot or injured 
in connection with an interaction with police than a white person. We've looked at the negative effects of mass incarceration, but does incarceration reduce crime enough to offset its disadvantages? This has been studied, and uh, in the most uh, optimistic of uh, research, it indicates that to a certain point, incarceration can suppress crime, but that we've gone well, well, well beyond that point, um, that we've incarcerated so many people that each additional person that's incarcerated is not yielding a similar benefit in, in reduction in crime. Presidential candidates on both sides of the aisle have been vocal about possible solutions to mass incarceration. In Florida, we didn't want to fill prisons with nonviolent offenders. So we expanded drug courts. They started here in Florida, and we expanded them all across the, the state, and we created prevention programs. But instead of investing in jails and incarceration, maybe we should invest in jobs and education for our kids. But some experts question whether Republicans and Democrats can truly work together. I think the question is not so much whether um, there's differences in views on mass incarceration between the two parties, but what are the motivating factors behind their um, now uh, groundswell of support uh, across the aisle um, towards reform. As we have seen, incarceration on such a massive scale is hindering our economy, society, and government. Change is supported on both sides, but no one has been able to offer a path of meaningful reform. A president must unite both parties and take concrete action to stop mass incarceration, once and for all.